Hi everyone, today's topic is transcendental functions. We are going to be solving uh, examples regarding the logarithm function and the exponential functions. I'm going to start by mentioning some results regarding the derivatives and integrals of the logarithm and the exponential functions. First, remember that the ln function is defined over the positive real numbers to the set of real numbers. Its derivative is 1 over x. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. If the argument of the function ln is not x only, if you have a, any function u of x, you differentiate it in the form u prime divided to u. If the base of the logarithm ln function is not equal to e, but equal to a, another base a, let's say, it is differentiated in the form u prime over u with a factor 1 over ln of a. And of course, the well-known result or formulation, let's say, the integral of 1 over u is the logarithm of absolute value of u plus an arbitrary constant c. And if we also remember the exponential function, its uh, domain is the set of real numbers and the range set is the positive real numbers. It is well known that the derivative is equal to itself for the exponential function. If the power is not x only, if you have any function u as the power, you differentiate it. You differentiate the function e to u in the form u prime e to u. If the base of the logarithm is not e, but any number a, let's say any positive number not equal to 1, this should be equal to, the derivative of a to u is u prime a to u with a factor ln of a. And of course, correspondingly with this one, uh, the integral of e to u is equal to e to u plus an arbitrary constant c. I'm going to start now by introducing an example regarding the derivative of the logarithm function. Before differentiating this directly uh, with the formulation u prime over u, I'm going to take this into a more simple form so that I can differentiate it more easily. Let's write it in the form by using the properties of the logarithm function ln of sine of x plus ln of cosine of x minus for these two guys minus logarithm of e to x minus logarithm of twice 2 to x squared. And I can do some things more here also. Let's keep the first two. minus x times ln of e, of course it is equal to 1, minus power to the front, x squared times logarithm of 2, ln of 2. Now, this is quite easy to be differentiated. The derivative of ln of sine of x, you first put the argument of the logarithm to the denominator, and upstairs you put its derivative, which is cosine of x, plus the derivative of this second guy, put the argument of the function ln to the denominator downstairs, and its derivative upstairs minus sine of x. The third term is simply minus x with the derivative minus 1. And the last term, you keep the constant ln of 2, and the derivative is twice x, of course. I can rewrite this in the form cotangent of x minus tangent of x minus 1 minus 2 ln of 2 x and finalize the solution. That's it for this question. This example is on logarithmic differentiation. Uh, actually, it's quite a straightforward calculation if you consider this argument of the third root function, let's say f of x, you have something like y equal to f of x to 1 over 3, which is easily differentiated in the form But you may notice that the last expression, f prime, f prime, which is the derivative of this expression inside the third order root, it's not quite simple to evaluate. However, if I use logarithmic differentiation, it's going to be quite simple in this manner. Let us write this function in the form x, x plus 1, x minus 2. I'm rewriting the argument. and putting it in a power form. 
at this step, I'm evaluating the logarithm of both sides, ln of y equal to And of course, I'm able to take this power to the front. At the same time, by simplifying this expression in the form, by using the well-known properties of the logarithm function. Now, well, you may now appreciate that this is quite a simple form to differentiate. Uh, on the left side, there is logarithm of y, and remember that y is a function of x. Therefore, the differentiation with respect to x on the left side is an implicit differentiation, giving me y prime over y when I differentiate with respect to x. On the right-hand side, I have simple expressions to be differentiated. The log, uh, derivative of the ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of the second term is 1 over x plus 1. The third term, the argument to the downstairs is derivative upstairs 1. Minus x squared plus 1 downstairs. This one upstairs minus the same thing for the last one. OK, but please be aware that the differentiation process has not been completed yet, as y prime is equal to 1 over 3 times y times this expression, finally in the form. Do not forget putting this y to the right hand side. This is quite a common mistake done in exams. And finally, I'm putting this derivative expression as the last term. That is a minus sign here. Let me have a final look at the expression. Yes, that's correct. Okay, this is the end of the solution. The example is on the derivative of the function ln of x to cosine of x. And in this example, I'm going to illustrate the procedure you are going to follow when you have a function f of x as the base and another function g of x as the power of a function. When you differentiate this guy, now I'm telling what are we going to do. First of all, let us say our function is equal to y ln x to cosine of x. Let's name our function as y and evaluate logarithm of ln of both sides, giving us ln of y equal to ln of, ln of x to cosine of x. Of course, I can take this power to the front by the well-known properties of the logarithm. When I do this, I no more have any power to be differentiated. At this step, uh, I'm going to differentiate this equality from both sides with respect to x. On the left, there is y, and it is a function of x. On the left, the differentiation is an implicit differentiation. The differentiation with respect to x is giving you the term y prime over y. On the right, there is the derivative of a product the derivative of the first one is, of course, minus sine of x. You are keeping the second term the same, ln of ln of x, plus the first one, cosine of x, times the derivative of the second. For this function, the argument is this ln function. I'm putting this, putting it to the denominator, and its derivative to the upstairs, 1 over x. Therefore, y prime 
the derivative of my original function is equal to y times this expression, which means logarithm of x to cosine x multiplied by this expression. plus cosine x, x ln x. This is the, I think, simplest form of the derivative. Okay, nothing is wrong here. That's the end of the solution for this question. Now, coming up, a few more examples regarding the logarithms and the exponentials. I'm starting with a very simple example. The derivative of this expression, quite easily, if I say this is u, a function u, its derivative is u prime over u, which means I'm putting u here. And the derivative of the argument, tangent x, second of x, this is the derivative of second of x. The derivative of tangent is, of course, second square x. You'll see that there is a common term on the uh, numerator here, second of x. You create a common factor of second of x, After the cancellation here, you obtain the simple result as second of x. This is quite a simple example. The intuition I'm going to obtain from this example is more important for me. If I have such a question, for example, what is the integral of second of x? Of course, in the previous example, the derivative of this function completely is equal to second of x. Therefore, the integral of second of x is going to be the function exactly differentiated here, which is logarithm of second x plus tangent x plus a number, arbitrary number c. For safety or for the rule regarding the integral of the logarithm function, I'm putting the absolute value sign here due to reasons I'm going to mention now. Another way of evaluating this expression. You can remember uh, this formulation yourself or remember what I have, what I'm doing here now, in order to evaluate this integral, the integral of second of x. Please do memorize this, how I do it. I'm taking this second of x, and I'm going to multiply it by a form of one, say, second of x plus tangent of x divided to the same expression. Keep the x there. In the final form, that becomes this expression, and in this final form, it draws my attention that for the numerators, for the function in the denominator, there is second of x and there is tangent of x. The derivative of second x, here it is, and the derivative of tangent of x, here it is. Therefore, actually what I'm doing is I'm uh, running everything I did for the previous question backwards for this example. If I say that's u, the upstairs becomes du, since the derivative of, again, let me say please, the derivative of tangent, here it is, and the derivative of second, there it is. Therefore, the integral of du over u is logarithm of absolute value of u, and finalized by back substituting u, what was u? u was second of x plus tangent of x plus c. And you'll see the reasons why I have put absolute value signs there. Well, uh, regarding this example, uh, I'm again stressing that please memorize this result. The integral of second is this one, or remember how I evaluated this integral by multiplying this form of one, second of x plus tangent of x. Let me pass to the other example. It is quite a straightforward one again. It is asking me the integral of this expression. What is the integral of this expression? This needs a substitution, and you may well see that the substitution is going to be something like this. If I say u is equal to e to x squared, because this derivative is somewhere here, du is twice x e to x squared dx. 
how this happened, please remember that e to u is differentiated this way. u prime e to u. Therefore, the derivative of x squared to the front here and the exponential function itself. When I use this substitution in this integral, let us say that integral is i. After this substitution, i is equal to, let's pay attention to this form, this term only. It is cosine of u. And the other terms, twice x, e to x squared, and dx. Twice x, e to x squared, and dx. There they are, being du. This is quite a simple integral for us. Cosine u is, of course, the derivative of sine of u. And I'm not forgetting my arbitrary constant c, which is, of course, some credit for us in our exam. Backward substitution, u is equal to e to x squared finalizes my solution. Well, I have space for one more question. Let's pay attention to this. What is the integral of 1 over e to x? I suggest you uh, how I evaluate this again. Keep this in mind. Actually, the question is asking us, what is the antiderivative of this expression? What is the integral of the function 1 over 1 plus e to x? Yep. Well, let us pay attention to the numerator and let us make it similar to the denominator. So I'm adding a term, e to x, and subtracting the same term and treat these two terms together, 1 plus e to x, and treat this separately. Let's write it here, 1 plus e to x. I'm dividing it to 1 plus e to x minus e to x, again the same denominator. If that's OK, that is giving me 1, integral of 1 dx integral of 1 dx minus, minus integral of this expression times dx. Now, see that they are quite easy, Bob. 1 is the derivative of x minus what to do with this second integral. Again, I see that the derivative of this denominator is living upstairs as the numerator. If I say that's a function u, or say u is equal to 1 plus e to x, du becomes definitely e to x dx. Upstairs is, again, in the form du. I have an integral of the form du over u, which I evaluate as logarithm of absolute value of u plus a constant c. Finally, x minus logarithm of 1 plus e to x plus a constant c. I'm not putting an absolute value sign here as the function 1 over e to 1 plus e to x is already a positive function. That's my result. Again, I suggest you to remember how evaluated this integral. Dear students, this lecture was about transcendental functions. We solved examples regarding the exponential functions and the logarithm functions. See you in our next lecture.